Andrew Wheeler was confirmed last month as head of the Environmental Protection Agency. Today, he announced what he views as the greatest threat to the environment. As the administrator of the U.S. EPA, I believe that water issues are the largest and most immediate environmental and public health issue affecting the world right now. By water issues, I mean primarily clean and safe drinking water, marine litter, and water infrastructure. Wheeler says drinking water is a bigger global threat than climate change. Those comments are drawing scrutiny by critics who say Wheeler's past as a coal lobbyist is tainting his view. Wheeler sat down to explain his reasoning with CBS News Chief Washington correspondent Major Garrett. It's the administrator's first network interview since his confirmation last month. The drinking water today worldwide is probably the biggest environmental threat we have. If I hear you correctly, you're saying all of this tension, energy, politics over on climate change is essentially misguided. We have 1,000 children die every day worldwide because they don't have safe drinking water. That's a, that's a crisis that I think we can solve. Most of the threats from climate change are 50 to 75 years out. What we need to do is make sure that the people who are dying today from lack of having drinking water in third world countries, that problem is addressed. Wheeler wants to drive a global debate on clean water, even though water woes continue here at home in Flint, Michigan and elsewhere. Baltimore, Milwaukee, Newark, Chicago, Detroit, cities not named Flint also have deep problems with public water supply. I want to make sure the American public understands 92% of the water every day meets all the EPA um, requirements for safe drinking water. What can you tell people in those impacted areas is going to change under your watch and give them a greater sense of confidence about the water either they consume or their children consume? Again, 92% of the water in the country That's cold meets comfort all Flint. of our you know that, standards. I, I realize that, um, but we're That we're does no good for Flint. anyone who lives in Flint, Michigan. Well, it does, because we've been working with Flint. Wheeler supports President Trump's 30% budget cut to the EPA, and his downplaying of the climate change threat is sure to anger Democrats. Climate change is not a hoax, but is a massive, unprecedented threat. When you hear Democrats running for the nomination in 2020 say, we're in a catastrophic situation. Is there anything unreasonable about those impressions? Yes, I think it is unreasonable. All the environmental indicators continue to get better. That was Major Garrett reporting. To discuss Wheeler's announcement, my colleague Rena Ninen spoke with Brady Dennis. He's a national environmental reporter for The Washington Post. Brady, Wheeler says unsafe drinking water, not climate change, actually poses the immediate threat to the environment. Can you sort of put this into context for us? Why were his comments so significant? Uh, well, it's interesting. Uh, obviously, unsafe drinking water is, is an ongoing threat always. Um, but his comments about climate change have gotten a lot of attention today, I think in part because it's contrary to what the government's uh, own scientists have said about climate change, and that is uh, that, that climate change is an ongoing threat, that we are starting to see effects around the country and around the world now, and that these effects will get worse over time, so that it's not some distant problem, that we're actually seeing uh, the effects in this country now. And that's also um, you know, what, what scientists around the globe have said. The, U, the UN itself um, had a big report on this last fall. And so there's just more and more evidence that, that there are uh, immediate effects of climate change and that mm -hmm. it, if that worsens, then the problems will only grow with it. I mean, some people have even called climate change a national security threat. We know, you know, this man, he has served nearly eight months as acting EPA administrator before being confirmed in February. How has he shaped the administration during that time period before being confirmed? It's interesting. He has he is a much more low key uh, head of the EPA than his predecessor Scott Pruitt, but he's really continued on with the same sort of uh, deregulatory attitude, and he's been very upfront about that. That he um, wants to lighten the load on industries such as uh, you know the coal industry and, and others, and, and so he's really done that in a quieter way, uh, but in a no less aggressive way than um, than the man that came before him. And that's what uh, that's what President Trump has said he wants uh, in that position. You mentioned his confirmation. You've actually reported on his confirmation last month. And, and I want to quote something you wrote. You said Democrats initially viewed Wheeler as a pragmatic technocrat with whom they could forge a handful of policy compromises. Does that sentiment still remain? 
I think that hope still remains from the Democrats, but I think they also see Wheeler as someone who um, is very savvy in the ways of Washington. He worked on the, the on the Capitol Hill in the Senate for a long time as a staffer, and he's been in this world. He worked as a lobbyist, and so he knows how to move regulations forward. He knows, uh, or deregulation forward, as, it, as the case may be. And so I think they see him as um, someone they hope that they could work with, but someone who whose uh, goals are, are opposed to theirs uh, in almost every way. And Wheeler told our Major Garrett that the Trump administration actually plans to roll out two big regulations later this year. It's, it's all part of an effort to reduce CO2 emissions. Do, do we know anything about those plans? I think uh, that he was referring to two specific regulations there. Uh, one deals with fuel efficiency um, the regulations for cars around the country. The other is uh, a rollback of an Obama era regulation that deals with uh, emissions from uh, power plants. And so what he's saying there is these will, these will help reduce the nation's carbon emissions. And that's technically true, but not nearly as much as the Obama era um, versions of those rules had. So these are still rollbacks. They still uh, would reduce some of the emissions, but not nearly as much as the nation had been on track to do. We've heard so much buzz about the Green New Deal. How is that factoring into the debate? I mean, the Green New Deal is, uh, you know, is a popular talking point on both sides. I mean, for the Democrats, they want aggressive action on climate, and I think for different folks, that means different um, different things. And for Republicans and folks like Wheeler, they often point to the expected costs of these things and say, you know, we just can't afford it, and this will cost jobs, and um, not a lot of common ground there right now. Brady Dennis, I want to thank you for joining us, Brady. Thanks for having me.